70% of those polled thought all British forces should be withdrawn from Afghanistan. Today, that figure is exactly the same. And 65% of people agreed that the war was unwinnable. Again, that's barely shifted since November. Uh, Bill Rammel, do those results concern you, given that in that time we've had Operation Mostrak, we've had the, the troop surge, and it appears that the majority of people still remain sceptical? Well, it does concern me that we're not winning enough support. I mean, the actual poll results vary depending on how you ask the question and when you ask it. Overall, my strong sense looking at the polls across the board is that opinion is split about 50-50. That's not good enough. We need to do better. We need to really get across to people the real progress that is being made, that, you know, territory that previously the Taliban controlled is being taken back, that we are winning hearts and minds. Alongside that opinion poll, you had a BBC, ABC opinion poll taken of Afghan opi opinion recently, where 70% of ordinary Afghanis thought their country was heading in the right direction, and two-thirds of them wanted the international coalition forces to be there for the moment, because they know that we're protecting them from the Taliban. Now, we don't want, that, we, we don't want our forces at the same time to be there forever. That's why the whole strategy is about building up Afghan capability, their police, their army, so that they can in the longer term take on that responsibility and our troops can come home. Bernard Jenkins, what would the Tories do differently? Well, I think uh, uh, there's been a consensus on this and it's not really a, a party political issue, this. But what I would say, though, is I think 63%, uh, 65% who want our troops to come home are in principle exactly right. We all want our troops to come yeah. home. Um, the, the question is how quickly and how safely can we bring them home? And... I would just say, I think we're on the last throw here. Um, the point made about right at the outset of this war, why didn't we try and separate Taliban from, from al-Qaeda? Because a lot of those Taliban in Afghanistan are going to finish up being part of the peace process, being part of the settlement in Afghanistan. And um, what we want to, is to speed up that political settlement. And we now have a military <coughs> political strategy going in Afghanistan at last, which is either going to succeed in this over the next 12 months, or really, quite, quite frankly, all bets are off. And I think we should, we should be very clear, we're, not, we're never going to win in Afghanistan. It's not about winning. It's about leaving behind uh, um, a self-sustaining government that can provide for its own security uh, without it all going pear-shaped and spilling over into, the, into Pakistan and the region. And I think that Pakistan is now <coughs> beginning to agree. I think you might yeah. agree with this. Pakistan is now beginning to agree there is some consonance between the McChrystal strategy of the new American general and uh, the Pakistan government. Bob Russell, do you agree it's not actually about winning? It's just about doing the best we can and securing it for I the future? I think it's a bit more than that. There cannot be a military victory. Bernard's absolutely right. It has to be military, political, economic, the three sides of the, of the triangle. If you took an opinion poll in Colchester High Street of supporting our troops, I think it would nudge 100%. Mm. So the, the, the issue is that we all support our troops, or virtually everybody supports our troops. They're doing a brilliant job. All three of us have been to Afghanistan. We've seen what they do. And the political... Um, people in Helmand province who I met welcome the fact that British armed forces are there because they know the alternative is something that they do not want to see the return of the Taliban and all that goes with it. But it has to be economic and political as well as military, the three sides of that triangle. If we can get that right then there will be uh, we're not talking here about a liberal Western democracy. We need to have governance coming up from the, the tribes and the provinces, not a central government in Kabul pushing down. I think that's where we've gone wrong. And the other thing where we've gone wrong is the failure of our major European NATO allies to put troops on the ground in southern Afghanistan. And yeah, we'll come back to you in just a moment, but I want to go to John Taylor, who's in the audience. Now, your daughter was very tragically killed in the 7-7 bombings. And obviously, the terrorists in that case were homegrown, <coughs> as it were. They came from Britain. But what's your feeling about being in Afghanistan? Do you think it is the right solution? Yes, I do. I think it's very valid and just. And I'd like to see us stay in Afghanistan until we finish the job. So you believe, actually, what the government is saying, that the, we need to tackle the epicentre of, of terrorist activity? Absolutely. I do agree with what most of the panel has said. Um, it's not just a matter of a military uh, win. It's, it's also economical and winning the hearts and minds of Afghanistan. Not only do we suffer in this country from terrorism, but the Afghans have suffered in the past from a terrible regime 
the Taliban, a very violent, nasty regime, and that's what they were trying to export back to our country here. My daughter died on, the, on July 2005, along with 51 other totally innocent people. Four individuals on that day took it upon themselves to try and change the way we live in this country. And basically, they did it through violence and murder. Let us not forget what happened in New York and Washington in 2001, when almost 3,000 people died at the hands of not the Taliban, but, but who the Taliban supported, Al-Qaeda. They were planning this. They were planning attacks in the West from very early stages. 1998, Osama bin, Laden, Osama bin Laden declared war on the West. We know for a fact that the four or three of those people that caused the London bombings actually went out to Pakistan to learn terrorism and they, they went out there for actually three times. So it is the place to be, you think. And Dr Natasha Ezro, lecturer in the Department of Government here at the university, you know about Afghanistan on the ground. Do you think what the, the politicians are trying to achieve is unachievable? Generally, yes. I tend to be pessimistic about the war in Afghanistan because it's more than just a military intervention. It's also about state building and achieving stability. And it's very difficult to achieve this in a state like Afghanistan that has such weak institutions and lacks a strong centralized state. Uh, and that also really lacks the ability or the sources to accumulate revenues and to generate economic growth. So for these reasons, I tend to be pessimistic about it um, just because it seems like such an uphill battle. So do you think that politicians uh, are being rather naive in the way that they're uh, approaching this? Well, initially it did seem to be the case in that there didn't seem to be a lot of investigation about what needed to be done in order to achieve the goals. And to achieving the goals of state building are especially difficult. Kevin McHenry, very briefly, former soldier, served in Afghanistan. So you also know what's going on on the ground. And, and you would like to see more known here about the successes. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to follow the theatre entry force into Kabul um, just after the Taliban had left, and I witnessed firsthand the effects of that regime on the people. Uh, men, if the beard wasn't long enough, they were in prison till it was. Uh, females were not allowed education at all. Women were not generally allowed to walk in the streets. There were no pictures, no music, uh, no kites, stupid things like that. Um, we soon made a difference, and the troops do make a positive difference everywhere they go. Um, every picture that hangs on an Afghan wall at the moment, uh, every kite that's flown, every bit of dancing is a small victory. Um, every female that gets an education and steps out of uh, a house is a step in the right direction. Thank you very much. Well, there's one part of our region where the war has a particular resonance. Nikki Jenkins reports now from Luton, one of our most diverse communities.